Hello, my name is Mark. I'm a lexic and my hand shakes like an old man. No, I know you have three questions. First, why is this green all fuzzy? Second, what is a lexi? And third, what does it have to do with your hand shaking like an old man? Well, if you don't mind, I'll answer the second question first. A lexi is a term that I invented that means ADD, ADHD, dyslexic. Why? Because all people with dyslexia have ADD or ADHD and because it's too hard to say ADD, ADHD, dyslexic. ADD is Attention Deficit Disorder, ADHD is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, Dyslexia is Greek for Can't Read. If you're normal, you're going to have a hard time keeping up with me. So I went ahead and put a chapter marker every minute in this video. I first want to go through the traditional understanding of these two disorders, then give you some new information that will change the understanding of this disorder. ADD and ADHD are the same exact chemical problem in the brain. The problem lies with our neurotransmitters. A neurotransmitter is a small chemical signal that goes from one nerve ending to the next nerve ending. Nerves basically do two things. They transfer electrical signals and chemical signals. The electrical signals through the nerve itself from the nerve ending to the transmitter, you could say, and the chemical signals from the transmitter to the next nerve ending. Well, with alexics, we have two problems with certain neurotransmitters. Those neurotransmitters are neonepinephrine, dopamine, and serotonin. Roughly, we have 10 to 30 percent of those chemicals in our brain, which means we have extremely low levels compared to somebody else who doesn't have alexia. The second problem is called reuptaking. That means that the nerve sends out a signal and it comes back to the same exact nerve. Doctors base their judgment of our disorder on what they observe. Not all things on the list I'm about to give you may apply to you, but it'll give you a good idea of what atlexics do. Atlexics are verbally impulsive, fidgety, unable to wait their turn verbally, easily distracted, disorganized, miss unimportant details that normal people think important but aren't really important, bounce from one task to another and back again, and make bad decisions that seem logical at the time. The person with ADHD is more likely to have lower dopamine levels. This would explain why they are verbally and physically impulsive, why they would be more likely to do really dumb things that seem logical at the time, and more likely to act without thinking. Now, the second half of alexia is dyslexia. Dyslexia is a language disorder. It's symbol-driven that makes it extremely difficult to read and write. When reading, the left side of the brain becomes dormant and the right side of the brain becomes extremely active in different areas and they're not always in the same location. The key to understanding dyslexia is phonomic awareness. Phonomic awareness is the ability to manipulate sounds in a spoken word. Dyslexics have a real hard time with phenomes. That's the ability to correlate sounds with letters, like the word cat, while well, the sound k and c is where our problem lies. We can't seem to get the two to match up. Light sensitivity affects 3 to 8 percent of dyslexics. It's thought to be a correlation of bright light and certain colors. Basically, the page is shimmering, and the page shimmers brighter than the text. The people who figured this out were the Irwin Institute, and they manufacture color gels that'll stop the page from shimmering. So you can also get your glasses tinted, and you can also go to a theatrical lighting house and get sampler packs of 150 different colors of gels, and then buy larger pieces of gels, and the page will stop moving. There's two reasons why I did this video. If you don't mind, I'll give you the second reason first. The second reason why I did this video is to get people talking about the static. That answers your first question. Why is the screen all fuzzy? Well, the screen is all fuzzy because most people with ADD, ADHD, and dyslexia see static. I like to get people talking about the static so somebody can start working on a solution for it because it would be really nice to get more than two hours of sleep at night. Some people see static with their eyes open. Some people see static with their eyes closed. Some people see static with their eyes open and closed. I even met one individual who sees static only in one eye. She's a severe LD. I'm a severe dyslexic, so I see static with my eyes open and closed. There are two factors that are going to determine whether a person becomes ADD, ADHD, or dyslexic. That's the level of static, when they see static, with their eyes open, closed, or both, 
and the level of linguistic development they had before text. The major difference between boys and girls as far as dyslexia is concerned is verbal development. Girls are geared towards it. You get five ten-year-old girls together and you have to go out and get earplugs. You get five ten-year-old boys together and you have a sport, a game of war, or transference of technical data like RBI. So girls are geared towards speech and geared towards conveying their feelings. Boys can't do that. If you ask a man how he's feeling, he'll say, I feel pretty good, nothing hurt. See, a man has a one-lane rickety footbridge between his left and right brain. So it's a very dangerous task going from one side to the other. A woman has an eight-lane highway. Every thought a woman has goes through both sides of her brain. Say she asks a man a question and she doesn't like the man. And the man is stupid enough to answer the question. How does this dress look on me? The man says, Puce doesn't look that great on you. That night, when she talks to her friend, she'll say, He said I was fat. This is because a woman will take the left side question, How's this dress look on me? Transfer it over to the right side. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. And back over to the left side again will be a new reality from That dress doesn't look good on you because it's puce to You're fat. This is probably due to the fact that women have the ability to have two thought patterns going on in their brain at the same time. A man can only do one thing at a time. If you put it on a list, we'll do it. If you don't put it on a list, it won't get done. We can be tying our shoes and you can tell us what to do, and we look up and say, what do you want me to do? But if you take it and put it on a post-it note and put it in front of our face for 30 seconds, it'll get done. We're pretty simple creatures. Women are not being diagnosed with alexia. They say about 2% are alexic. 8% of boys are alexic. Well, that's not right. See, what's happening with the women is that they're being diagnosed with depression. They have the low feelings. They have the, the, the deep thoughts. So they're giving a nice antidepressant, and that sucks the soul right out of their head. As I said before, the key to dyslexia is linguistic development. Women have a much easier time when they're growing up dealing with the static than men. Men only have one text-to-speech center in their brain. Unfortunately, with alexia, until we deal with text, it's not activated. So we have one speech center in our brain. Well, women naturally have two speech centers in their brain. All severe alexics have three speech centers in their brain. This is due to the rebuild of the right brain for static. Women have naturally two speech centers. So when they deal with the text, it's much easier to convert over their brain. And what happens with the women, of course, as I said before, they become depressed because they're much more in tune with their emotions. And since they have 10% of the normal dopamine levels, they feel pretty bad. So they get an antidepressant and that sucks the soul out of their brain. The antidepressant stops reuptaking. Reuptaking is basically the obsessive compulsive side of alexia. Now, if you're a mild or moderate alexic, you don't have these problems. Now, when I say obsessive compulsive, I don't mean you rearrange your lawn gnomes every 15 minutes and wash your hands every five minutes. I mean you rethink things over and over and over again. You blow things way out of proportion. If your boss gives, says something minor that you're doing wrong, you, you blow it out of proportion and worry about your job. Um, you'll see something on TV where, where something bad happens to somebody in the news. Well, you'll put yourself in that person's position and rethink out every possible outcome of that situation all night long. That's the obsessive compulsive side. If you're mild or moderate, you're going to have some tendencies, maybe not sitting there dwelling on the thing over and over again. A part of the reuptaking is the brain going 24-7. We'll, we'll look into a problem that we had earlier in the day that we solved, and we'll just reuptake on it all night long. All people with alexia have hand tremors. Their hand shakes like an old man. Now, with women, they don't have the problem of being able to not control the pen. It depends on the severity of the static and the level of linguistic development. My hand right now is pretty steady. 
Well, that's because I'm on beta blockers, and those stop the hand tremors. My handwriting growing up was atrocious. And then I was put in storage, basically, the special ed, and um, that didn't help anything. So the linguistic development plus the static equals the dyslexia level. Women don't get diagnosed with dyslexia because they have a higher level of linguistic development than men, and they already have two speech centers, so they're able to deal with the text much easier, and they just think they're, you know, they need a little help reading, that type of thing. Where men, we have a really bad and hard time with it. There are two possible ways for our brain to develop text centers. In non atlexics it happens in nice straight rows in our left hemisphere. We already have a speech center in our left hemisphere, so that works out wonderfully. In alexics, well, because of the static, we have to rebuild our right brain to deal with the text. It happens in clumps in our right brain and not in the same exact spot every time we read. It moves around. So we have multiple text-to-speech and speech-to-text centers in our right brain. This explains why alexics are mostly left-handed and why we're so creative. Our right brain is a lot smarter than our left. We tap our right foot instead of our left foot because movement facilitates focus, and by tapping our right foot, it shuts up our left brain. Normally, the left side controls text, speech, and logical reasoning. The right side controls shapes and forms, three-dimensional reasoning, and emotions. What happens when we rebuild our brain is that we have to develop a text and speech center. When that occurs, we when we read, we have to read each word in our brain. We have to say each word in order to get it off the page. Now, this may be due to the only way our brain had was able to rebuild itself was by speaking each word so our left brain could hear it or because we've developed a secondary memory system and logic system in our right brain. I now would like to compare two brothers, Johnny and Jimmy. Johnny, well, he can't read. He has a real hard time staying awake in the first couple of periods of the day. You know, he sleeps through most of his classes, sleeps most of Saturday. He's not very sociable, except, you know, when he wants to tell you something he's interested in, and then you can't shut him up. Jimmy, on the other hand, is the perfect child. Head of all the teams, head of the soccer team, head of the football team, head of the baseball team. Well, being the perfect child, he can, of course, cover two bases. And since two people are sick, he's covering center and second base. Unfortunately, though, he forgot his sunglasses. So he's running out for a fly ball. He overruns the ball, trips on a sprinkler head, and gets knocked unconscious by the ball. He's blind as a bat. Well, Johnny's only consolation is, well, at least you get eight hours of sleep a night. So what happens with Jimmy? Jimmy compensates for his disability. His sense of smell, touch, taste, and hearing greatly improve. Well, the same thing happened to Johnny. Well, Johnny saw static on the page, and he couldn't deal with it. So his right brain compensated for his disability, rearranged itself so he could somewhat deal with it, and, you know, he kind of got along. Well, let's take Johnny down two roads. The first row, Johnny doesn't get dumped in special ed because his handwriting is almost legible. And, you know, his parents help him out, even though they were too busy making money to buy a sport ute and the gas for the sport ute. And if you own a sport ute, you got to have a boat. And if you got a boat, you got to have a cabin. So they weren't around much when Johnny was very young. He spent most of his time in daycare. Then he was born in late December, so he missed the first year of school, and he spent time in daycare. So he didn't have a whole lot of linguistic development. Well, when Johnny comes up against text, he can't deal with it very well. He hates reading in class, so he tries to stay attention to the teacher, but since he has the ability to think in multiple p thought patterns at a time, and because you see static, you know, normal people, they have fuzzy over here when they're reading. Well, with Alexics, we have fuzzy with static on top of the fuzzy. So if there's any movement, 
we notice it right away. It may be even possible that we can see movement outside of our visual range. I've noticed that that is maybe the case. Well, if there's movement over here, our eyes catch it right away and we look straight over. Well, Johnny, you know, is looking around the classroom because everybody's moving. And the teacher says, why don't you focus? So Johnny starts tapping his right leg, bouncing it up and down. And this bothers the teacher, so the teacher considers that he's unruly. And eventually, they put him outside in the hallway, which is the absolute best place for Johnny. He gets to meet the janitor, which will be his new job. So, you know, that's cool. Johnny then, you know, is being picked on by all the other students because he's stupid. And then he starts beating up the other students. He starts robbing, and half of our jails are filled with Alexics. So, road one, Johnny gets jacked, and he, he doesn't end up in a very nice place. See, so what'll happen is that Alexics need to compensate for their disabilities. So, they look to alcohol or drugs, and it doesn't do very good because they use the alcohol to put themselves to sleep so they can get it out of their sleep, but they can become addicted to the alcohol and they are unable to function in life after that. Well, the second road of Johnny, let's just say they take him in to preschool and the first thing they do is they ask Johnny to put on a magic helmet and the magic helmet is pitch black inside. They say, Johnny, do you see fuzzies? Well, maybe only in Encino, but he says, yeah, and then they flip a little switch on the helmet, and there's a tight checkered pattern inside the helmet with a bright white light. Johnny goes, ah! So you know what happens to Johnny? He started with phenomic awareness before he even sees text. It's a great and wonderful thing. They figure out what his color is, and the page doesn't move. So his left brain learns how to read, and Johnny is considered to be special instead of special ed, and he may find the cure for cancer one day. So if we take a look and say, well, all lexics is static, we now have a huge diagnostic tool because you can determine whether the girl's depressed or if she's a lexic really easily. You can determine, you can just make it a standard battery of tests. You, you have the little hearing tests and you get on a little bus and you hear the little tones and you press the button and you, you have standard vision tests why not a magic helmet or a dark room? You know, a little box inside the special van they have. This would make life so much easier for Alexics. Einstein was kicked out of school in sixth grade because nobody could read his handwriting and his spelling sucked. His math sucked too, but he was able to figure out equals MC squared. Why? Well, because his best friend did the math. Even though he sucked at math, he excelled at math, if you get what I mean. Einstein, Ansel Adams, Edison, Charles Schwab, all found a niche at what they do best because they were able to hyper-focus on things and because their intelligence lended them to certain tasks. Charles Schwab, after losing a whole bunch of money, would spend all night thinking about how he lost a whole bunch of money. So he wouldn't lose a whole bunch of money next time. Edison, he fiddled with stuff and said, ooh, that's lame. I should fix that. And he was able to make new stuff. Ansel Adams was able to see when very few people could see. We also excel in the physical arts, dance, music, and drama. We love drama. When it comes to your career, don't limit yourself. As at Lexix, we love to hyper-focus and get a degree in something we enjoy, and then we go into that area, and then we stay there forever. We don't really think that we are capable of doing more because we have to work our butts off to do what we do. And as a result, we, we become extremely good at what we do, and we advance, but there may be something completely different that you want to do that has nothing to do with your degree. So just because you got a degree in something, don't limit yourself to what, you know, your first job is and you worked your way up. Well, great, but there may be something much better out there for you. 
we're very 3D people. Where somebody has to go get a couple charts to figure out where slot A goes into slot B, well, we already know where it is. So engineering is a place that we excel greatly, and they don't really care if our handwriting is sloppy or not, just as long as the building doesn't come down. Everything's digital now, so your limits are limitless. Background noise. Background noise will allow you to get some sleep at night. If you have a fan or air filter or even a fish tank air motor, providing you have a fish tank, it'll allow you to get some sleep. Otherwise, you'll hear your own heartbeat and your own breath and every noise in the house. And you'll spend all night waiting for the next time it Now I like to compare myself to a friend of mine named Amy. Amy is a true hyperspaz, but she's also as cute as a button, so everybody loves her. She's a very intelligent woman, and she, su she can succeed at whatever she puts her mind to. She grew up in eastern Washington in a small family that's pretty much ADHD all around. So she learned how to speak very early on, developed speech very early on, she didn't have problems learning how to read in the same way that I did. Her hand shakes like an old man, if not worse than mine, but you can read her writing. She sees static with her eyes when they're open and closed, so the linguistic development is the only thing that can explain why she wasn't put in, a, in special ed. She was diagnosed with ADD early on. They gave her Ritalin. Now, Ritalin is a stimulant, and stimulants... Well, most of them don't suck your soul out of your head because they don't stop reuptaking. Well, with Ritalin, it has a very bad rep because parents use it to control their kids. And it's one of the few stimulants that sucks your soul out of your head, so I wouldn't recommend it. She tried Adderall. That made her feel a lot better, but it didn't stop the impulsivity. See, with Amy and me, we're both severe at lexics. And because of that, we have lower levels than normal lexics, and our reuptaking is harder than normal lexics. And because of that, one or the other, a stimulant or an antidepressant, really doesn't solve the problem. We need a stimulant plus an antidepressant. The manufacturers of antidepressants market them to Add Lexix because they originally, you know, you take Johnny in because he's depressed because he's the stupidest kid in the class, and they give him an antidepressant and he stops being depressed. So that's why the antidepressants are marketed to ADD and ADHD. Well, my insurance company doesn't cover antidepressants because they don't work long term. Yeah, they stop the reuptaking, but they suck the soul out of your head. The stimulants, that's the only thing that my insurance company will cover they raise the level of the chemical in your brain. So if you're a mild or moderate adlexic, either a stimulant or antidepressant probably will do wonders for you and make life just great and wonderful. But if you're a severe adlexic like myself or Amy, then you need a combo. Well, Amy, she's not going that road again. She decided that medication is not for her. Now, when she does Admin Mondays, she has to tell herself to focus, but that's all right. She's exceeding much further past any of the other managers in the company. Now, I was born in late December, so I was held back a year. My mom worked for my dad as a receptionist at his, doc his, his doctor's office. I grew up in a nonverbal household. My father would come home from work, read medical journals. We'd eat dinner. He'd read more medical journals. Then about 8 o'clock, they would watch TV for the rest of the evening, so there wasn't a whole lot of talking going on. And I'm the youngest of five. So I didn't have a whole lot of verbal interaction as a child. When I was held back a year, I went to daycare. And the only thing I remember about daycare is nap time. So for me, not having a whole lot of verbal interaction and having heavy static meant that I had a real hard time when I started working with words and letters and in reading. Once again, the second reason why I did this video was to get people to talk about the static. To help the manufacturers of antidepressants and stimulants to get working on the cure, I would like to start off with some statistics. First, 2% of women and 8% of men are considered to be ADD and ADHD. Well, as soon as static becomes associated with ADD and ADHD, 8% of men and 8% of women will be ADD and ADHD. 
a whole lot of women will be taken off of antidepressants, roughly 6% of the population. There's a certain amount of people on top of that that are not being diagnosed. I wasn't diagnosed with ADD until recently because if I didn't go and get diagnosed, my sister would have nagged me for the rest of my life. So there's roughly 18 to 20% of the population, this ADD and ADHD, that see static. Well, that should be pretty good motivation. The static is not just straight across. When our eyes are open, the people who see static with their eyes open, the static is pretty much even, but it's blobby to a certain extent. When our eyes are closed, it can be in moving blobs of white with the black and static on top of it in the background, so it'll move around in different parts of our vision. Or, when we're extremely tired, it'll move in geometric patterns, such as a, like a wire mesh. The wire mesh part, loose wire mesh, would be less dense than the, the whole, as it were. And that would not only be in our vision, but it would be moving, which is really annoying. The static that we do see on the page is not purely white. It's white with a tinge of color. That's why the gels work. We see the color of the gels in the static that we see. It's not purely white and it's not purely the color. The static is so small, it's really hard to tell. It's either the static is mostly white with a tinge of color or it's white static with a border of color. To help you find the cure, the one person who sees static with her eyes closed but not open only sees static with her eyes open when she's exhausted. So all you have to do is get someone who sees static with their eyes closed but not open, then get them exhausted, and then they'll see static. Well, you measure them with CAT scan or whatever blood chemistry before then and after they start seeing static, and you have the cause of the static. Realistically, there are two possible areas where it's occurring. It's occurring either behind the, the bridge of our nose where the two lines of information go from our retina to our visual cortex. It occurs there because of low shielding or and or the two lines of information are the nerves are close together, more close than a normal person. So a normal person's up here, we're right here, and then we have low shielding, which is causing the static cross, cross information. It's like video cable that's cheap, and if you put it next to a power line, you get static in your video. The most likely cause, though, is static occurring in our visual cortex as a chemical problem. Now for some clarification. I am not ADD. ADD, ADHD, and dyslexia are all lame terms. You see, I've been had. Yes, that's right. I have hyperattention disorder, which means a person with ADHD has hypertension hyperactivity disorder. And dyslexia is lame for the very, very reason that we can't spell it. Hi, Johnny. You're dyslexic. Can you spell dyslexic? Why don't you just kick us? The first recorded person that's been had was Peter of the New Testament. You can just see Moses saying, Oy vey, when Peter says, Lord, let's build some tabernacles. What? My jokes aren't that bad. Well, I've met three new people. I know that's not news. Um, the three people are, though, for Alexia. The first two are Trace Hads. And the third is a here hat. All right, you come up with a better name. The trace hats see fireworks in their vision from the center out or from the sides in. One sees primarily sides in and the other one's primarily center out of the two that I've met. They have had tendencies but aren't really hyper. They don't have any language disability and their hand doesn't shake like an old man. The here had, well, she's a true hyperspaz. 
she can hear a noise in a room like a machine, a whine in a machine, and go outside the room, go down the hallway, and still hear the machine. It's not a memory thing, it's hypersensitive hearing. We're hypersensitive by default. We go to bed and the blanket is rough and we don't get any sleep. The fan oscillates. Wow, wow, wow. We don't get any sleep. Well, she has hypersensitive hearing, has multiple thought patterns. The first two, the trace hads, they don't have the visual problem where they put the person that had something bad happen to them in the news and put themselves in that person's place and think out every possible outcome all night long. They don't do any of that. The hear had does though, but she doesn't put herself in the person's place. This clarifies hadlexia greatly. Originally, I thought it might be caused by the text because I had light sensitivity really bad when I grew up. And it isn't. It's two separate outcomes. They're both existent in had lexics with static. And let's turn the static back on because the black background's annoying. And they're, the had lexics it's there the had tendencies are caused by overstimulation growing up and your brain developing with the overstimulation that explains the disorder to a much finite more finite point the had lexics have the language disability plus the multiple thought patterns they're two causal pat both are caused by the static where the trace had doesn't have uh, really the multiple thought patterns to the extent that tra had lexics do and the here had has the multiple thought patterns but has no visual stimulation so has absolutely no language problem but is truly hyper medication i'm not a doctor i'm telling you to go see a doctor if you kill yourself don't come crying to me medicating yourself is a really bad idea i medicated myself for years with caffeine chocolate to be precise it's not a pretty picture People have killed their kids medicating them. They've used herbs and they gave the kid herbs and it made them better and they gave them a little bit more herbs and it made them a little bit better and they gave them a little bit more herbs and it didn't make that much of a difference. And they gave them a little bit more herbs and it didn't make that much of a difference. Give them a little more herbs and then they bought a casket. If you're a tree hugger, go see a tree hugger doctor. They talk to a lot of tree huggers and they read tree hugger journals. Chemicals are chemicals are chemicals. Just because it was grown on a plant doesn't mean it's better for you than grown in a test tube. Aspirin is a derivative of the willow leaf. They used to drink dried willow leaf tea. People have killed themselves or done really bad to their internals taking a whole lot of aspirin. Go ask somebody with an ulcer. So it's a chemical. You buyer beware. Don't medicate yourself. If you can't afford to go to the doctor, well, you have a couple possibilities. You can do the free clinic. I don't recommend it. The doctors are there to help you. The patients are there to see being, be seen by the doctors. But it's usually not in the best neighborhood, and there may be people who are manipulating the people going to the doctor who might want to manipulate you. So go with a friend. The better solution is internet. I know you don't have money for medication, so you don't have money for internet. Well, you can go to a public library, and if you're computer literate, you can have the librarian help you out. They'll be more than happy to. Don't let your pride kill you. Pride will kill you if you let it. You know, if you say, I, I can't go there because I'm computer literate and I don't want to look like a fool. Well... Say you get married and your bride's crossing the dance floor and the chandelier falls in her head. Don't dwell on that. That'll mess up a normal person. It'll really mess you up. And one reason for getting medicated or finding out what your medication level is, even though you're not going to be medicated on a daily basis, is because it rains on the good and the bad. Bad things happen in life. So... If you find out what your medication is now, when life hits hard, you can compensate for your disability because you have 10% to 30% of the dopamine levels. That's going to make you feel bad to start with. And something like that is going to make you real depressed and you'll reuptake even worse than you are now. So finding out what your medication level is a good thing and you should do it. If you're, you don't want to be medicated on a daily basis, some people get medicated for short periods of time such as giving a board meeting. 
They have to get ready for the board meeting. They have to give the board meeting and then they come off the medication. That's perfectly fine. You don't have to become fully medicated. You can become half or quarter. Get rid of the stuff that bugs the normal people and bounce around. There's no reason why you can't be partially medicated. So it's something to look into. Antidepressants, I'm kind of down on unless you're already on a stimulant. One antidepressant that I tried and then my insurance company said, oh, we're putting that under evaluation so we're not paying for it anymore, was Stratera. That left me feeling a little detached and it took care of a good portion of the reuptaking and uh, stopped what would have bothered the normal people if I worked with normal people. It helped me with focus. Now, the tree hugger solutions like fatty acids that I mentioned will help you with focus to a certain extent. Things like trace minerals, which may not work for you because they make, make your antiperspirant stop working. Trace minerals got rid of the edginess for me. Some of the other things did absolutely nothing. Everybody's an individual. One medication might not work for you. It might work for me. So you need to be flexible. And one medication that the doctor is going to start off with is Welbutrin. I don't know if it works very well. My sister tried it. It left her tired and anxious. You have to be extremely clear with your doctor what a medication is doing to you. As far as one other medication that you don't want to take, that's Paxil. Paxil is pretty much scary bad. Stay away from it at all costs. I went to a clinical psychologist to be diagnosed for ADD. You have to be diagnosed by a clinical psychologist or a psychiatrist in order to be medicated for ADD. Your regular doctor can't help you. If you have an HMO, you have to go through your regular doctor. If you have a PPO, then you can look up a clinical psychologist and go to clinical psychologist and have a low copay and then go to your regular doctor to be medicated. Paxil is the only one that my clinical psychologist that I went to said stay away from at all costs. Other than that, most medications should be pretty good for you. And it, everybody's an individual. And before you become medicated, you should contact your insurance to find out what they cover and then become versed on that medication so when you go talk to your doctor, you know what the side effects are already. Side effects can vary from many different things to many different things. It all depends on the medication. A lot of the stuff is, well, we gave this to 100 people and then we gave a placebo to another 100 people and the 100 people had this, 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 and this. Their left eyeball popped out on the third, second, or fourth week of the month depending on their age. Um, so a lot of the stuff that could be side effects might not occur. Keep that in mind. The first time I drove down the street and thought about absolutely nothing at all, it was so weird. Yes, that's right. You can get down to one thought pattern on a stimulant plus an antidepressant. The stimulant raises the level of the neurotransmitters that we have problems with due to the static, and the antidepressant stops the reuptaking. If you get on an antidepressant, the antidepressant alone will stop your reuptaking, and the reuptaking is what's driving you because you have 10 to 30% of the neurotransmitters. But by being on a combo, you can get down to one thought pattern. I'm down to one thought pattern, and I've been using a stimulant plus ipramine, which for me made me sweat like a pig. And at my job, I can't do that. So I'm switching over to Prozac, and hopefully that'll stop me from sweating. My sister was on a Stimulant Plus Prozac, and she's down to one thought pattern, so it may be only that you need to get an antidepressant that stops serotonin from reuptaking, because that's what Prozac does, to get down to one thought pattern. Amy, well, she's working her way up in the company, and she came across a great logistical task. She had to keep a whole bunch of stuff in order, and she couldn't. So she's become partially medicated. She's doing extremely well, the person with, who sees static with their eyes closed and not open is also going to become medicated because she goes into work to do five specific tasks and they don't get done because she's taking care of 50 tasks that don't need to be done. So she, that's preventing her from moving forward in the company, so she's becoming medicated. You can do it too. 
Now, you don't lose your creativity, you don't lose your intelligence. You lose the bad side of being had. I can get four whole hours of sleep a night. Really, I can. I don't have to think when I go to bed. It's really, really nice. You slow down a little bit, but you don't lose the ability to type and listen to the conversation behind you that you don't want to listen to, but solve their problem for them before they can figure it out. So you don't lose the good side of being had. You lose the bad side of being had. So it's something to think about. Partial or full, it depends what you want. Amy still has three thought patterns, but she's cool with that because it goes with the personality. Good for her. If you don't want to be medicated, there's another way to go. There's been more and more research done, and there may be triggers that cause the ADD and ADHD to come out in the kid. Like they gave a kid a glass of Kool-Aid. Well, before they gave him the glass of Kool-Aid, he was calm and still, and they videotaped him. And they gave him the glass of Kool-Aid, and within 15 minutes, he turned from Mr. Jekyll into Mr. Hyde. He is unruly, he wouldn't sit still, it was a bad thing. Well, the you could have a sensitivity to f food coloring. You could also have low B6 or B12. You also could have high levels of neurotoxic metals like aluminum and lead. Um, a doctor went to 800 prisons for use, and he took 2,500 hair samples. That's a lot of hair. And he found that every single one of them had high levels of neurotoxins in their system. So you can detox, and that may stop the aggressive behavior in your kid. Um, I didn't mention with Ritalin that uh, kids have died because of it, uh, not overdoses. They just gave him the regular dosage, and he keeled over the next day. So medicating kids may not be the best way to go. All of our school shootings, at least the majority of them that I know about, are involved with medication for behavior or ADHD, and the kids were on the medication when they went through the school blowing everybody away. So medication of kids may not be a good thing. There are ways to find out what you, your sensitivity could be. Like I said, you could be sensitive to food coloring or you could have high neurotoxic metals. You get a hair sample done. You could also have a food allergy, not a regular food allergy where they tap the back of your neck and then send it in, but a delayed food allergy. It has to go to a special lab. So you might want to look into that. That may be a better way to go for you. Disabled student services. This is something you want to join. If you're a student, you can get on-time tests. Non-dyslexics. Average 10% better on an on-time test. Dyslexics, average 50% better on an on-time test. You can get all your books on tape. I joined Reading for the Blind and Dyslexic back when it was Reading for the Blind. It's a good thing. If you're ADHD, you may not need these services, but getting the books on tape so you can move around and do other things would be an advantage. See, being that we are disabled, like, the guy who has MS. Hey, hey, you got MS? Get out of the chair and go run a marathon. He can't. He's disabled. We're disabled. We have a language disability. And until ADD and ADHD change, it's more of a concentration disability. So join Disabled Student Services. It's a good thing. Comic Sans Surf is what you want to switch your computer over to be your default text in your text editor, regardless of what it is, and your web browser. If you're, if you're on a web page that doesn't force your computer to use a certain text, it'll be in Comic Sans Serif for you, which is a great advantage. Mac doesn't allow you to change the background of the text editor or Appleworks or Safari. They don't allow you to change the background color, only Adobe Acrobat. You can find programs for Windows-based machines on the web that will allow you to change the background color default from white. The better system is Mac. You won't lose your information. It may lock up on you. It's called a kernel dump. But you, you, you don't lose your data. You don't have to reinstall OS X. Other advantages? Well, first, it has a text-to-speech built in. So you highlight the text, you hit your button, which you default in system preferences, 
and it starts speaking after a couple seconds. The second time you hit the button, after you highlight the text, it's almost instantaneous. It will go ahead and not stop speaking until the end of the page, regardless of what you're doing. So if you're working on a new program or you're editing video or you're doing this or you're doing that, it reallocates almost instantaneously so you doesn't, it doesn't have to stop speaking. It also has something called script that you can download and convert the text into an audio file. Now both these, both these things are available on an IBM, but IBM Stutter. If you go with an IBM, with Windows, Dragon Naturally Speaking is the one you want. It's a better program. If you can get the text-to-speech component through another program, just get the basic because all the preferred and the middle version add is capabilities of doing more junk. The, the voice recognition is the same exact component. Ironically, IBM makes the only voice recognition for Mac. In conclusion, I would like to say that I hope that this video has helped you understand who you are to a much better degree and that you'll be able to take charge of your life more than you have in the past. Instead of just, you know, getting along, accept your disability, find out what you need to do to change your life for the better, and then do better than you thought you ever could do. Thank you. This has been a Poofy Hair production.